So in my experience, as a person is learning to improvise, they typically go through four distinct stages. Now, I base these stages purely on anecdotal evidence that I've seen in myself and in many of my students. Nevertheless, I do think they are relatively accurate as a generalization. Now, the first stage I've called tinkering. Let's say I have a student who has never improvised before, and I tell them, all right, this song is in the key of B flat major, so you can use the B flat major scale to improvise over it. Go. Now, they know the B-flat major scale. But they're scared to improvise because they don't know what to play. So they might improvise something as follows. Right, so they're playing somewhat randomly um, from the B flat major scale. They're playing quite softly, quite carefully, and quite hesitantly. They're not really thinking about what notes to target, phrasing, articulation, creating motifs, or anything like that. There's no intentionality in their playing. They're too scared to commit themselves to an assertive phrase, so they kind of just tinker. Now, after a few weeks of tinkering, they get used to the sound of the B-flat major scale and maybe the fingering as well, and they start to develop a bit more confidence, and thus they move to the next stage. They can now play confidently, but they are possibly too confident. They think, cool, I can use the B-flat major scale to improvise over this chord progression, great. I know the B-flat major scale, so let's see how many notes I can fit into each bar. Now, I call this stage the Coltrane. And if you don't know why I call it that, go and have a listen to some Coltrane. So they might play something like this. confidently, loudly, and forcefully, which is great. They're no longer scared of improvisation or the B-flat major scale. And that's a big step, right? That shouldn't be discounted. That's important. But there's still no intentionality, and it's just a bit messy. The notes and the rhythms are still somewhat random. And there's still no phrasing or articulation. They're trying to be a little bit too fast, a little bit too ambitious, and a little bit too clever. But they don't have the ability to pull it off yet. Their fingers are running ahead of their ability to process the notes. They can't think as fast as they're trying to play. So the natural solution to this is to slow it back down. Now this is where improvisation gets interesting. The student is now comfortable with the B-flat major scale, and they can play lines up and down. But up to this point, their fingers have been doing all the work. They've just been playing somewhat random notes in the scale. But from this point onwards, it's the brain that's got to do the heavy lifting. And their fingers just externalize the thing that they're thinking or hearing inside their head. So you have to play only as fast as you can think. And so naturally, you're restricted to playing short, simple phrases, allowing plenty of time to pause and think in between phrases. So you have to leave room for thinking. Now, I call this stage the bassy. And so it might sound something like this. So because you're now playing slower and simpler phrases, your brain can now keep up with what you're playing, with what you're doing. This means you can now play intentionally. You can hear a little phrase in your head and externalize it on the piano. 
such that you're almost singing through the instrument. And in fact, many of the great jazz pianists do exactly that. If you listen carefully to Oscar Peterson, Bud Powell or Keith Jarrett, you can actually hear them murmuring and humming and singing their lines as they're playing the piano. This means that they're thinking as fast as they're playing. They're not just playing random notes. If they hear ba 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 in their head, then they can simultaneously play it on the piano. Ba ba ba. And this means you can now create nice, smooth, melodic, lyrical and pleasant lines in your improvisation. So you're not just rushing through the scale as fast as you can going up and down, you're actually creating interesting phrases using that B flat major scale. Great, so up to this stage we've only been using the diatonic B flat major scale. This is called playing inside. We're using the correct scale to improvise over a chord progression in the key of B flat. So finally, now that you're comfortable playing diatonic lines and making them sound smooth and melodic, we can start introducing more interesting improvisation techniques that I cover in many of my other videos. Things such as guide tone targeting, creating tension and resolution, motivic development, chromatic runs, cycle patterns, side slipping, and so on. So just like a newborn kitten, you want it to get used to playing inside before you let it go and play outside. So then over time, you'll learn to think faster and faster and therefore also to be able to play faster and faster without kind of tripping over yourself. You can also dedicate more of your mental energy to phrasing and articulation so that you create interesting accented and syncopated rhythms as you play. So you're not just playing at one volume monotonically. you insert accents every now and then that gives it a little bit more punchiness um, and a bit more rhythmic interest. You'll also be able to start combining some of the slower melodic lines with some faster scalar runs to create some variety in your playing. So it's not just at one extreme or the other, but you can kind of create some interest by playing something slow and then doing a fast little run. Now this is the final stage of improvisation, where you can look at the entire solo holistically. So you're no longer just playing random notes or even independent phrases. In, at this stage, you slowly learn to link your phrases together using things like repetition and motivic development to create a kind of overarching story arc that builds and then resolves tension over your full improvisation. what stage of improvisation you're currently in. And thus, what you need to do to move your playing up to that next stage to further develop and improve your soloing ability. Otherwise, that's it for me. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you found this somewhat useful. See ya.